Donald Trump leads Biden in six of the seven swing states in a head to head matchup. And that's according to a fresh new poll coming from the Wall Street Journal. Biden's campaign rallying cry of, at least I'm not the other guy, apparently not working, not so persuasive. So here's the data, according to the poll and according to the journal survey, Trump leads one on one in Arizona, 47 to 42%, Georgia, 44 to 43%, Michigan, 48 to 45%, North Carolina, 49 to 43%, Nevada, 48 to 44%, and Pennsylvania, 47 to 44%. He and Biden draw even though when it comes to Wisconsin, both coming in at 46%. Now clearly voters are not so happy with Joe Biden. But establishment Democrats are absolutely convinced that they can, you know, shame voters, chide them, if you will, into voting for Biden. And in a recent appearance on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Hillary Clinton basically did just that. It's like she has this obligatory role in every election cycle to wag her finger at Democratic voters or independent voters and demand that they vote for her preferred candidate. During that conversation, she told Fallon laughably, you know, it's kind of like, one, meaning one of the candidates, is old and effective and compassionate, has a heart and really cares about people. She's referring to Biden there. And one is old and has been charged with 91 felonies. I don't understand why this is even a hard choice. Really, I don't understand it. Real hard to argue that President Joe Biden is the guy with this big heart as he continues sending 2000 pound bombs to Israel And as Israel continues dropping said bombs on humanitarian aid workers, refugee camps, hospitals, innocent civilians, do do they think that we don't see what's happening? You can't keep arguing that Biden is the good guy, the decent guy, the kind, compassionate guy as this war rages on in Gaza. But let's get back to the polling and some of the data. In fact, I want to give you a little bit of Stephen A. Smith. I never thought in a million years I would say that because he had a response to Hillary Clinton that I think is worthy of some airtime. So let's watch. I don't think it was a very wise statement on her (laughs) part. How did that work out for her in 2016? I think that's something that we have to recognize. Yes, she won the popular vote, but at the end of the day, she wasn't the president of the United States. It was him. The voters, a lot of them out there, tens of millions of them out there, by the way, don't care what he's going through right now. They don't care about his guilt or innocence, his perceived guilt or innocence. They don't care about the 91 counts. They're thinking about their lives. And a lot of times we see politicians taking the positions that they're taking and why we can respect their candor and their honesty, they do seem a bit detached at times from what the voters are actually feeling and what the voters are actually thinking. Nobody wants to hear that from Hillary Rodham Clinton at this particular moment in time, because especially if you're Joe Biden, what are you really, really worried about right now? You're worried about folks coming to the polls. You're worried about them showing up to the polls to vote for you. You're not worried even about them voting for Trump. You're worried about them not showing up to vote for you. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. That's exactly right. I don't think that people who previously voted for Biden, for the most part, are going to switch their vote to Trump. I think that most people feel the way I feel, to be quite frank. I can't stand Biden and I don't like Trump. So I'm probably gonna write in a candidate or do some sort of you know, protest vote. It doesn't even matter, it doesn't matter, honestly. Because you look at the Biden administration and Sonny Hostin to her credit addressed this on The View today. He does not take the concerns of his own base seriously. The reason why in primary election after primary election, you have this giant percentage of Democratic voters casting their ballot as uncommitted is because they want a ceasefire. They want Biden to use his leverage by withholding weapons to Israel to get some strings attached to ensure that Israel reigns in their slaughter of innocent civilians. But Biden's unwilling to do that. He gives us a lot of tough talk. There's a lot of rhetoric coming from Biden, but when push comes to shove, Behind the scenes, homeboy is transferring weapons 
to their military. Okay, there's been 100 plus weapons transfers already. Now, how is the Biden camp reacting to the Wall Street Journal poll that I gave you the results of earlier? Well, on today's CBS Morning, Jill, Jill Biden actually denied reality, which doesn't surprise me. Let's watch. So it's not a part of you that's a little worried because no, you seem to be no, off kilter a little no, bit. No, okay. I feel that Joe will be reelected. But when these polls, like the Wall Street Journal, one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states, that no, he's not losing in all the battleground all but one. states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. So mm. you know what? Once people start to focus in and they see their two choices, mm -hmm. it's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. So that's the big bet they're making, right? As long as we keep fear mongering about Donald Trump, comparably speaking, voters are gonna cast their ballot for Biden because he's the better option, right? But why, why would they find him to be the better option? Because he's the decent one, because he's the kind one, because he's the compassionate one? Now let's go back to the Wall Street Journal poll because it's important to discuss why voters have basically turn to Trump. And when I say that, I'm referring to the independent like swing voters. One reason is that an increasing percentage of voters think that Trump's first term was actually better than Biden's first term. That's what they're saying. In every state in the survey, negative views of Biden's job performance outweigh positive views by 16 percentage points or more, with the gap topping 20 points in four states. By contrast, Trump earns an unfavorable job review for his time in the White House in only a single state, Arizona, where negative marks outweigh positive ones by one percentage point. The economy, of course, has a lot to do with the numbers as well. Although the results here are kind of mixed because it seems as though Americans feel better about their personal financial situation. But think overall, the economy in America isn't doing so well. Some 35% of voters in the swing states cite the economy and inflation as the issues most important to their vote, compared with 19% in the journal's national survey in February. Only 25% say the economy has gotten better in the past two years, compared with 31% in the national poll. But interestingly, those same voters feel like their own financial situation is better than other Americans. In North Carolina, for example, voters describe the national economy in negative rather than positive terms by 66% to 33%. Yet those numbers are reversed when asked to rate the state's economy. Some 68% of those in the survey said that it was becoming harder for the average person to get ahead compared with 26% who said it was getting easier. A 42 point gap, but 46% said their own finances were moving in the right direction, just three points lower than those who said their finances were going in the wrong direction. So that framing was fascinating because still at the end of the day, more Americans feel crappy about their personal financial situation than feel good about their financial situation. But nonetheless, voters also stated that they think that Trump is more mentally and physically fit. And while they're both old, I think it's undeniable that if you watch both of them during public appearances, during speeches, there's a clear difference. Listen, that's not to say that I'm a fan of Trump. That is to say though, that energy wise, there is a difference between the two candidates. And that concerns some of the voters who don't know what to do because they might not like Trump, but they're not happy with Biden and they feel that he's just not mentally fit to serve another four years in office. This isn't a joke. I mean, this is the President of the United States. That is the role that they're both vying for. And we have two elderly men, one of whom still has difficulty accepting the results of the 2020 election. The other, honestly, constantly looks lost when he's out in public. It's just a disaster. And so we'll see how this all plays out. Remember the Democratic establishment insisted on allowing for Biden to run for reelection. And they totally squashed the possibility of an actual robust primary. And the other question is, is there gonna be a general election debate? Will we ever see a debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in this election cycle? It seems like it's not gonna happen, I could be wrong. 
But how shameful is that, especially during an election cycle where one side is constantly talking about the importance of maintaining our democracy? What kind of democracy do we have when the two presidential candidates don't even have a single debate? But that's where we are right now. It is just so disgraceful. And you see a growing percentage of self described independents in the country. And that is for a reason. An increasing percentage of Americans do not identify as either Democrat or Republican. And it's because both parties have been deeply, deeply disappointing. Hey, thanks for watching that video. We really appreciate it, guys. And we appreciate it if you become members because that allows us to be independent, honest, progressive, all the things that you don't get from corporate media. And all of that is because of you guys. Hit the join button below and become one of us, become a young Turk.